All right, in the last video, I introduced you to the Pathfinder to minus tool, which is right here, in order to cut one shape out of another shape. And I did it on the gray so that you could see that it's actually cut out and it's all contained. And now I can move this back onto my logo where I want it. You can use your arrow keys too. All right, very good. And if I wanted to, I could even add a second vector like this if I wanted, and I could center it. But because it's not an overlapping path, it's a separate path. I can turn that on or off or shrink it or even move it around. And so you can also create your black shapes by just overlapping them. You know, so maybe I do something like that. And instead of deleting it, if I don't want it, I could always just turn it off. All right, next. So what I showed before in last class's videos wasn't this one. It was, let's see, it was this one. I showed how I can use the shape tools and modify them, but I can also just copy and paste vectors from one file to another, right? So maybe I want it like that, which looks pretty good. And I could copy these other ones as well, like this one, copy it, which were made with the shape tool and then rounding the corners, and then paste it, line it up in the middle. I should have a guide somewhere, but let's make one right in the middle. Hmm. There we go. And I could copy these over as well, or I could copy all three over, but I'm not sure I really like them because of the angles. So what I might do instead is just draw them with the pin tool instead of trying to use the shapes. Okay, so this one is now centered. So what I'm going to do is just use the pin tool like I've been using. And what's really helpful about the pin tool is that it will show me as I kind of hover how to line it up with another path that's close. And even though that's not what my sketch does, that makes a lot more sense. So I'm going to use this pin tool and I'm just going to taper it in a little bit. It will even show me the point mark on kind of this micro grid. I want to find the top. There we go. Wait for that purple to show up. And then close my path. Remember to close your paths. And then I might decide to use my small selection tool and just open up this base a little bit so I don't have such a strong... angle. And now I'm just going to duplicate that. Command uh, C to copy, Command V to paste, not paste in place, but then lock it. And now I can use the large selection tool just to shorten it. Right, like that. 
and maybe widen it out a bit so it lines up a little bit more. Okay, now I want to round these, and I'm going to remind you about the cornering tool. I use the small selection tool, and I just click on them, and I'll see these roundings. Now, if I do it without selecting an individual anchor point, it will round all of them the same way. And I think that's what I want for this logo. All right. And I think I want this one to be a little bit thinner. So I'm going to hold down Option while I shrink it in and a little bit shorter. Like there. Okay, now here's the trick. How do we make it match side to side? Well, I really tighten it up. And I select all of them by holding down Shift and Command with the Selection tool. And then I'm going to say Command-C, Copy, and then Edit, Paste in Place. Then I'm going to right-click and say Transform, Reflect on the vertical, 90 degrees. And then I'm going to hold down Shift while I move it, and it will lock into place. That's why Central Symmetrical Illustrator definitely helps with that. And I'm just going to tighten up the shape a tiny bit. There we go. Okay, now what do we have logo-wise? We got this. And that works for the most part. Honestly, I think... I just want to draw this one again. And if you hold down shift, you can get to perfectly horizontal. And then close it. And then I think, oh, I thought I closed it. Let's see. Ah. Close the path. There we go. Close the path. All right. So now, how can I get this to be truly symmetrical? I am going to delete this one that's behind it, or at least turn it off for now. So select it. You can see which one is selected. Turn that off. Turn on my new one, right? And then what I'm going to do is actually duplicate this, copy it, paste it in place. Up, oh, it didn't paste in place. That was just pasting. Paste in place, right-click it, transform it, reflect it. And now we have perfect symmetry, right? If I merge them together. So I'm going to use the Pathfinder tool, Command and Shift to select them both and then use the Pathfinder tool to merge them together into one shape. And then I can use the cornering tool to round it a little bit. But I have extra anchor points I don't need that I can get rid of. So that I can get even rounding all the way across. So get rid of these extra anchor points that happen from the merging. And now when I use the small selection tool and select it all, I can round all the corners just a little bit. And that's more what I want. 
for the stripes on this, this logo. And I can do that for all of these. Set the rounding where I'm happier. Okay. So, what's next? I'm going to make this a little bit smaller with the large selection tool. So you can only do kind of these transform commands with that large selection tool. Up a little bit bigger. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. All right. You can turn on and off the grid with command apostrophe, turn off on and off your any guides you plotted with command semicolon, just like Photoshop. Now I'm going to lock that. So I've got the wings and I've got the torso. I'm going to hit save, command S. Now I'm going to do the tough part first, which is the curvy branch and all the leaves, right? It's tough because it's kind of organic, but with the pin tool, it should be quite easy and it doesn't need to be symmetrical, right? So I'm going to create a new layer that I'm going to plot with the pin tool, click and move. Click and drag to get a curve. Click and move to set the curve. Try to have as few anchor points as possible. Click back on it to get back to a straight to be able to set your curve. And then click back on it to be able to set my curve. And then click back on it to be able to set your curve and then close the path. All right. So now that we know how to use it kind of more professionally, it also helps to swap it. So I'm just seeing the outline. Now, how can I fix this and make it more what I want? With the small selection tool, I can individually select these anchors and kind of move them to where I want and I can adjust the curves. And if I want to add an anchor point, which I do, I hit the plus sign and then I can add an anchor right there and then use the small selection tool to move it in. I think that works pretty well. And then I'm going to play with this curve to average it. Yeah, not bad. This one's a little wonky, but instead of making a new anchor point, I'm just going to try to average that out or maybe just use the cornering tool on it. There we go. Okay, now I can swap that to be a fill. Now this next shape, same thing. Use the regular pin tool, which is just P. and set a curve right away, right? Then click back. I'll zoom in so you can see it. Set my next curve and then click back on the anchor point to start again. Set my next curve. Do it like this, click back, and again, I can always swap so you can see your outline. Drag, click back, click and drag to con control it.
Okay, now I'm going to swap 